Nothing that walks on earth, nothing that walks on earth or that treads the earth, except that its sustenance is upon Allah. Don't worry about sustenance. Allah will sustain you. Allah will provide for you. Allah will give you just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the bird that flies suspended in the air. لو أنكم تتوكلون على الله حق توكله لرزقكم كما يرزق الطير تغدو خماصا وتروح بطانا The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says if you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the proper way he will sustain you just like he sustains the bird. He will look after you. Now some people sit back and they relax and they say, okay, Allah says he will look after me just like he looks after a bird. So let me just sit back and wait. I can be lazy. I can be anything. Whatever is written for me will come. Wallahi, the hadith is not complete. The hadith says, meaning what we've spoken about so far, we still need to speak about the end of the hadith. It says, that bird leaves the nest with an empty belly in the morning. It goes out and comes back at the end of the day with a belly that is filled. Where it got its food from? The help of Allah. But it worked hard throughout the day. Many of us work very, very hard. We work hard. Allah will give you. Allah will provide. Keep on calling out to the owner of sustenance. The difficulty is sometimes the glamour of the world overtakes us in a way that we don't realize the owner of the money that we're looking for is actually the maker who made us. So when we get closer to him, we become wealthier people. Subhanallah. I will say or I will recite a few verses through the course of this evening's lecture that will prove to you that if you want sustenance, you need to get closer to Allah. You need to get closer to your maker. He will provide for you. He will grant you. Subhanallah. So we all find that in our lives, as we're born and we grow up, there are difficulties. Our parents face challenges to look after us. Our parents find it difficult. Our mothers have spent sleepless nights. Our fathers as well. I hope the fathers are not just lazy, sitting back, relaxing and leave it for the mom. You need to take care of the child as well sometimes. You need to give the mum also, sometimes you need to give the mum a little bit of sleep and say, don't worry, tonight I'm on guard. Subhanallah. Do we do that? MashaAllah. I hope it will happen by the will of Allah. May Allah make it easy. But we feel the difficulty. It's not easy. It's exciting when someone is expecting and we get so happy. MashaAllah, I'm expecting. May Allah make it easy. May Allah grant you a birth that will be, inshallah, easy. It won't be free of difficulty, but Allah can make it as easy as possible. However, once the child is born, it's a whole new ball game. Your life changes. You go through hardship, sleepless nights. You might struggle in terms of finances because now you have a child. But Allah knows that that is his plan. That is what you are on earth for, to strive within the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that by the time you leave the earth, you have already developed a link with the maker whom you are going to return to. And you have lived a life such that the baton you passed it on to the next generation. Yesterday, I was speaking to a group of young men and I was telling them, you know what? It would be quite simple to divide our lives into three because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that A'maru ummati ma bayna sittina ila sab'een. The average lifespan of the members of my ummah between 60 and 70 years. Say for example, 60. Let's take the lower figure. The first 20 years, the previous generation is teaching you how to live life. Do you realize that? The first 20 years, your parents, your teachers, whoever else, they are teaching you how to live your life. The second 20 years, you are living your life. Subhanallah. So now, I'm graduated, perhaps 20, 25, I'm living my life, I got married, I have my children, what am I doing? I'm enjoying a little bit here and there. You clock 40 years. After that, the last 20 years, you are now preparing the next generation to live a life. It's amazing how these 60 work. Now, this is not from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa this division. This is just from our experience. We will notice that the first portion of your life, 
people of the previous generation are teaching you what life is all about. The middle of it, you are living your life. The end of it, you are busy teaching other people how to live the life. It goes to show you where Allah says, إِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةٌ Remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when your Rabb told the angels, I am creating a Khalifa on earth. What is the meaning of Khalifa? One of the meanings is those who come one after the other. That is all one of the meanings of Khalifa. That means I came, my parents taught me, I led a life, I teach my children, I leave, they lead their lives, they teach their children, they leave, and so on. It's amazing how this is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I will face challenges. I was created in order to face the earth. And the earth is not simple. It is filled with obstacles. Just like if you were to enroll into a beautiful college that has a very high name in terms of education in your country, it's not going to be a walk in the park, subhanallah. It's going to be difficult. You need to be facing examination after examination and test upon test and guess what the more qualified you become the more difficult the tests are at the beginning they are very easy simple tests they give you an interview they ask you what do you know about medicine and you say well not much they say well that's why you are here come we will teach you as they teach you one concept they test you about it when they teach you 20 concepts they test you about 20 concepts then you go into the practicals and then you become a doctor after you have passed the final examinations. So when it comes to the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, I put you into this exam room. You will go there. You will learn what it's all about. By the time you clock maturity or puberty, you are now called mukallaf. You are responsible. You are answerable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What will we do? Allah says, Surah Al Ankabut. Allah says, Does man think, do you think that it's sufficient for you to say we believe and you will not be tested? In fact, we have tested those before you as well in order to determine and distinguish who from amongst you are truthful and who are false in their claim. People say sometimes, why? I'm a believer. Why do I have so many tests? Why do I have so many difficulties? Why do I have so many hardship? I can tell you why. Because you are in the school. You are in the exam room. You have undertaken that Allah is one. You have believed that Allah is one. And you believe this is the messenger. Allah says, okay, come. You really believe? We're going to test you. So how will we test you? You believe Allah is the sustainer? You believe Allah is the curer? You believe Allah is the... All wise, the all knowledgeable, you believe he is the Lord of the worlds? Okay. So when we make you sick or ill, may Allah grant us cure, say Amin. When we make you sick or ill, we want to see what you do. Will you employ methods that are against what we have taught? Or you will do that which is permissible. You go to the doctor, you may want to read some Quran, you may want to look after yourself. There is something called Mu'awwidat. Mu'awwidat meaning those chapters of the Quran whereby if you were to read them, you would be protected from the devil and his progeny. You need to read them morning and evening. It is like medication. If you have high cholesterol and the doctor tells you, you need five milligrams of cholesterol every single day. At this time, what will happen if you miss it? If you stop it, your cholesterol levels will go high. The same applies. If Allah tells you to protect yourself from the devil, you need to read the last two surahs of the Quran or you need to include with it Ayatul Kursi, which is a verse of the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah. And if you don't do that, don't blame anyone when you become ill or sick. Remember this. It's a test from Allah. You need patience in order to endure 
Now one might be asking, this is an introduction to a beautiful topic. When it was advertised, I saw it said there, patience and prayer. Sabr was salah. That's what it said. Sabr was salah. And I'd like to add to that as well, that the importance of being generous, the importance of giving. So why did I start this way? To show you that we will be tested. He came onto the earth in order to just enjoy without being tested. No, you will enjoy with the tests. Allah did not say you're not going to enjoy, but there will be pockets of difficulties that will overtake you at times. So difficult, so hard that you will need fine good words to encourage you. You will need people around you to give you some hope. And this is why in Surah Al-Asr, if you take a look at the short surah, a beautiful verse at the end, Allah says, let me mention it. Allah swears an oath by time. Allah says, I swear by time that all mankind is at loss. All mankind is at loss except for those who believe and do good deeds and they encourage each other or they remind each other. They constantly remind each other regarding the truth and they constantly remind each other to bear patience. Wow. Wow. Subhanallah. Constantly. If I see you, you're in a difficult time, difficult situation. You are my perhaps son or daughter or spouse or whoever else you may be to me, just a normal person. It is my duty, if I'm a good believer, to tell you, don't worry. Everything will be okay. It's fine. It will be okay. Turn to Allah. Don't lose hope. Continue. We're all struggling. We're all going through challenges. Keep on going. Don't give up. Those words are so powerful, my brothers and sisters. Use them often. Encourage people at your workplace, Muslim, non-Muslim, whoever it is, give them a word of hope. Because when you give them a word of hope, Allah will create hope in your own life. And Allah will give you so many doors and avenues of goodness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you in a million and one ways.